if you achieve the craziest pumps, doesn't have to be a heavy weight, but you have that volumization of the cell, it, that, that uh, cell identifies that look, and you can go back into that look again, repeating something similar. We had some great free talk today. Uh, we caught up with Regan, um, and Regan's hitting 300 pounds, so we'll take a listen to uh, some of the strategies uh, Milos is using with his training, and he's looking bigger than ever. We know how aesthetic he is, so it's gonna be awesome to see him hit the stage and see how he uh, stacks up with the current lineup. We talked about pec injuries, how to safely load the pec um, into, into growing, uh, the importance of elongating a muscle and challenging that muscle elongated position to create the most change versus limited partial range of motion. Even though there's a place for partial as well, you, you still want to really challenge that muscle in the elongated position. We talked about Chris Aceto stories, possibly me competing. So that's something that we're going to uh, dive into down the road. Check out drinkmore.com, your mineral-based water enhancer, help to incentivize the adequate water intake per day. Subscribe, any questions below or any topics that you guys think we wanna cover during the free talk, Please comment below. What's happening, Milos? Man, how's your weekend? Uh, very good. Uh, uh, Regan is back in town, so I start torturing Regan again. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm going to train him right after uh, at 12 noon. Uh, man, he's big. You know, when I watched his pictures uh, when he was traveling, I, I kind of like, ah, oh, man, you know, he's losing weight. And then when he came in here, I mean, you can see he's legitimate 300 pounds. And uh, you know that structure and shape. Did you say 300? 300. 300? 300, zero, zero? Three, zero, zero, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, yeah, 300. Zero, zero. You, know, you know, I told him, you know, don't come to the gym unless you can prove it to me and step on his head. <laughs> but, but listen, uh, as we know, I'm sure that uh, you have a similar physique, so you love his structure, you like uh, the, the shape and everything else. And everybody's calling for a little bit more size, a little bit more size. So I don't know if you've seen me uh, talking to Jay Cutler and uh, manager Matt in the last one. They were asking, okay, how would old champions do? Like, how would Lee Haney do? And in the, I said, like, Lee Haney would be super competitive. But he was only 245 pounds. You know, uh, you put him next to Regan. Regan would be like 260, right? I say you can't go by numbers. You know, really. Uh, Lee Haney was 5'11", 245. But his 245 on the stage was dwarfing everyone. You remember back in the oh, day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was so dominant. So I never put the number. I mean, uh, uh, Andrew Jack, phenomenal physique, beautiful structure chef. He was close to 300 pounds at Dino Classic. And everybody, oh, you, you need more. You're kind of stringy, right? So, you know, for, forget about uh, height and weight. But uh, uh, yeah, Regan, we are bombing the chest today. I think. Uh, I discussed with you, uh, maybe it was hypertrophy coach here last time when we talked about uh, quadricep stimulation, right? Yeah. On the, on the quads. So today's challenge uh, is chest. I, I want his chest to expand, right? So, so pretty much finding the exercise he feels the most that we can put uh, the load right on the chest and then stretch it safely. And then you can, I mean, there's many exercises you can squeeze it safely. But stretching it safely, you know, that's when people freak out, right? I was always terrified of, of a pack tear. I don't know if you ever, you know, have that thought. But, uh, you know, a few times when you start feeling something, like, oh, you know, that's it. That's it. I'm going home. And uh, before with uh, uh, Regan, that's what was happening. You know, kind of, oh, you know, he feels something. As soon as you feel something, you have to back it off, right? Yeah, 100%. You know, uh, real quick before we go into the pec tears and the stretching and all that, I, I would arguably say that Regan has one of the most aesthetic physiques in the open division, and him coming in with more size, yeah. I, I mean, in my opinion, he's going to be uh, in incredibly hard to beat because he's so balanced, you know, and, um, you know, his back is crazy. He's got, he's still young, you got that young looking structure. It doesn't seem to have much abuse and in, in injuries and in the muscles. The muscles look very healthy, so it's going to be uh, pretty exciting to see how he comes out on this next show. But three hundred pounds? I mean, yeah. he's five nine, right? Five <laughs> ten? He's almost six. Uh, oh, he's I, almost six. I'm, I'm, 
I will, now I'm, I'm claiming I'm five nine. I'm five eight and three quarters. I'm gonna I'm gonna say say nine. He sounds better, but uh, he is like uh, just when we were in uh, actually the reason why I know I'm five eight and three quarters. I was in Reno's show and uh, they had a classic physique there, so they could uh, you know uh, measure us and weigh us. I said, I might as well let me, let me check. And uh, Regan stepped on the scale, and he was five eleven and three quarters. You know, so he wasn't really six. But gotcha. yeah, I mean, listen, those uh, broad shoulders, right? The teeny tiny waist, as you mentioned, from the back, he's spectacular. I mean, right now, I'm telling you, small, with thick lower lats, wide upper lats, sided glutes, roping hamstrings, very good calves, you know, so, whoa. So, yeah, this is exciting for me because he's like a diamond in a rough. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. When uh, when you called, I was uh, opening uh, Samson's update. Uh, I didn't really respond to him yet. Uh, Samson's uh, three hundred thirteen pounds. Let me just three hundred thirteen pounds. pounds. I don't say you got it. You got thing. it. Milos, you got, you uh, he's going to be going roster. for uh, yeah three thirteen and very lean. Right. We we did initially last year when we did serious off season. You know we went to uh, one hundred fifty kilos. And 150 is 330. Eh? I didn't get that. Could you try again? You know what? <laughs> Did you hear my Siri? Yeah, yeah. Respect your privacy <laughs> and only listen when you're talking to me. You can learn about Apple's approach to privacy on Apple.com. There should oh be a little X button up there. That happened yesterday, too. That's in my tooth over here. Eh. I'm not sure I understand. Holy shit. Chris, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to shut off the Siri. Uh, same thing happened in the with the old school podcast. It's just not talking. <laughs> so, uh, but back to the uh, back to the chest stretching and loading. Yeah, um, yeah I actually uh, I actually partially tore my pec in 2012, getting ready for my national um, attempt or my pro qualifier. And uh, luckily, I let go of the bar immediately. But I mean, it was my own fault. I was kind of I never I haven't bench pressed in a while as in like probably four months at all, just dumbbells and machines. And then one day my buddy's like, bro, let's, why don't we end with bench press? And I did some pretty decent weight. So I'm like, sweet, next week, let's do it first. And the week after I did it first and I didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. And I was doing rest pauses, only warming up with 225, but I was kind of exploding off my chest. And third warm up set, of doing 225 again just to get more blood in it was like terrible but regardless that's all over with yeah. and back to the point of loading wait, wait, wait. The chest. Did, you, did you go all the way up in a uh in a tendon or like a muscle yeah it it, yeah. it started originally okay. here and it fell all the way to the bicep but like i let go of the bar right here as soon as i went to go press and that sharp pain happened i let go of it um completely and uh, luckily, like I, I had swelling and I had very mild bruising, but no deformity. Yeah. Um, I'm sure if I pressed all the way up, it probably would have gone all the way. But I rehabbed it with a uh, um, professional strongman's help in my area who's had multiple pec tears and he's come back from all of them. He just told me what to do right off the rip and then what eventually went the way back. But what's that? Multiple pec, multiple pec tears. Same, same pec? Uh, no, him, he yeah. tore no different parts of his pack, both packs. But I mean, he's like he, he's still doing professional strongman at the time, so like whatever. Um, but you know what's funny, Milos, is before I move on to exactly what you're doing, uh, loading the pack safely, is the year and a half after I tore my pack, my chest grew faster than ever because I had to learn. How to make lighter weight so much harder so i had to hyper focus on squeeze as you always talk about as we talked about here and remember one day evan sent he's like he's a good friend of mine and we were training on and off it during that time and he's like bro what did you what did you do to bring up your chest so much and i'm like honestly like these are the things that these are the only four exercises i could do which uh, ones? you know which ones? Fl flat dumbbell incline dumbbell cable fly um and a pec deck and that's all i could do um and i just really emphasized you know 
the mild stretch, pause, squeeze, making everything I can to make that weight harder so I have to use the load in the pack. And my chest responded like crazy. Um, but back to what you're saying about loading the pack, you know, in a stretch position. And as you implemented, you can't sit there and load the pack in the massive stretch position with like 500 pounds, right? It's like you got to use the right loads. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I, I mean, uh, you know, when I'm true to myself of, okay, maximally stimulating, maximum amount of muscle fiber in a targeting muscle group, you have to apply every possible uh uh, range of motion and load on you know in stretch position mid position and uh, peak contraction short and everything but they're those risky exercises right that uh you cringe even before you you attempt so i don't even use those i don't even want to you know what i mean are if you I referring have, to bench press uh, bench press yeah, yeah or like let's say if you do like re i'm guilty of it i don't know if you even about a month ago i did uh um there was Anne Nagayan, Nagayan and uh, uh Joey they trained chest in a um what do you call it uh, dragon's lair and uh you know I see them you know pretty exhausted I said okay well, before you leave let me jump in and and you know put you through one uh exercise but uh I was doing 60 and 35 pounds for them okay so 60 pounds uh flat uh flies with uh uh focusing on stretch but really maximally stretching and then holding the stretch position for like three four five seconds right and then 60 pounds is not light you know by no means but it's not super heavy so uh you know I felt comfortable stretching them with that much but then like you said you have to do anything in your power to make that concentric part you know the hardest possible so you don't just swing it yeah. you have to squeeze it into the most muscular right you know the, the, the big contraction so two three four five seconds stretch two three seconds squeeze you know to the you know pretty much close to the failure but then with the same dumbbells you know just turn around and do the dumbbell uh, flat press same thing with exactly what you said anything in your power Chris that you can make now these dumbbells and this dumbbell press almost impossible with the 60 pounds that you can usually play with right now when you're pre-exhausted is a different different story but you can literally I swear to God you can literally feel like somebody's stabbing you in the chest like this kind of burn right so just at 60 pounds like you fail completely you know I drop almost 50 percent uh, to 35s right and and do a few more they had a craziest pump ever right and for me even though somebody was saying this just yesterday every day before I, I forgot it's about pump it's, for me I do believe if you achieve that crazy pump you know during oh, oh like uh, pump is temporary and it's not gonna be retained or anything else no 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 once you can bring your body and your muscle and uh, that crazy pump in whatever muscle identifies it and you do gain something I'm not a double blind scientist, you know, with the fucking university study that I can prove. But I, I hope you agree. If you achieve the craziest pumps, doesn't have to be a heavy weight. But you have that volumization of the cell, it, that, that uh, cell identifies that look. And you can go back into that look again, repeating something similar. And, it, you know, it retains it. So for me, even for today, go with the uh uh Regan I want him to achieve this stupid pump you know I, the, one of those pumps that uh you almost can't train anymore because you're so pumped you, you know the good best way to explain that is I think where people kind of run amok and try to dismiss the pump is you could achieve a crazy pump by doing 100 reps right but that's yeah. not what we mean we're not yeah. trying to create blood flow with a high demand almost aerobically we're referring to that pump that's so excruciating and fills the muscle full of blood, which is from getting a great mind muscle connection. Because if you are getting a crazy pump and you are, you know, traveling in the anaerobic threshold and you're in that 15 rep range or you're doing a giant set, one, that mind muscle connection has to be there. You're not mm -hmm. going to achieve a mind muscle connection and have a shitty pump. It's not going to happen, right? And then, two, like you said, 
when you vom you when you voluminize that muscle, you creating more blood flow, which is obviously going to cause more nutrients and healing to the area. But the more pumped you get, it almost it goes hand in hand. You, you need mind muscle connection to get a pump. You get a crazy pump. Your mind muscle connection gets greater because you can feel it more, right? Yeah. And then when you stretch it, it expands. And then, like you said, you're able to connect more. You pump more blood into it. I do believe there's a ton of merit in that. I mean, let's be honest. You're never gonna. I'm never gonna grow and have a massive upper chest if my upper chest area I can't connect well. It doesn't pump well or anything. This doesn't happen. And any muscle on my body that ends up being a dominant muscle in my life have always been the muscle that pumps the quickest, gets the best connection, etc. So it's like if you're not able to gravitate and get that pump, get that connection, and draw that type of tension, squeeze, and pain into the area you're targeting, you're not where you need to be. You see, uh, I would insist every workout for every muscle, you have to reach maximum pump. <laughs> for me, that, that would be it. And then I, I remember, of course, Charles Polican, right? We were discussing yep. this and uh, he'd always uh, you know, try to reach that. And then if you do another set or another set and you start losing the pump, okay if you keep going and start losing a pump it's the time to stop yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the gauge yeah yeah and, and wouldn't you say and, and this is also of debate and people argue all the time and i think people uh kind of dismiss it because it doesn't allow them to use the same loads where they go well partial range of motion is just as effective as full range of motion and chart and challenging a muscle in the elongated position which we know research recently has stated that's not true. Targeting a muscle in the stretch position does cause more change. Yeah. But I mean, you figure that out before the studies even happen. And I'm figuring that out now. I mean, doing full range of motion because of boxing has yielded my physique to change in a positive way better than it did before when I was limiting my range of motion. But as you stated, you really have to choose the weight and move the weight carefully so you don't injure yourself when you're moving through that full range of motion. Like, wouldn't you see that there's so much merit in that, you know, but making sure that you do challenge instead of just doing this like short pumping motions? Yeah, I mean, listen, I understand both theories and all that stuff. Okay, you extend the set and there's a few partials, but there there was the posters uh, in uh, uh, you know several gyms with my picture and partial movement, partial development. <laughs> that was a poster, right? <laughs> and then I, I actually, I probably dig it out and post it on Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's a, one of the topics. But uh, by the way, yeah, uh, I have to put the pressure on you. Did you pick the contest? <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe okay okay i'll, let's, I'll text let's you that now okay. yeah i'll text you after uh okay, we get off this and i'll tell you i'll tell you what i'm planning only only two other people know what i'm planning uh -huh. um but uh i'll let you know what i'm gonna what i what i think i'm gonna do so yeah, it's good yeah, shit yeah. i'm not seriously you know I, I, i'm not uh, talking nonsense when i've seen how great you look uh, you're so close to the contest shape and your physique is improved. I mean, uh, I see you flawlessly. I mean, that uh, waist to chest to shoulders to lats ratio, everything is happening big time. And, 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 and like what Jose told me, he's like, dude, the cycle you ran and you only training three days a week, rollerblading, mountain biking and, and boxing the rest of the days of the week, like, could you imagine if you just, you know, for 16, 20 weeks, just put everything back into what you <laughs> needed to. You could squeeze a little more out of it. So, you know, and, and my body feels good. That's the better thing. Like my joints, everything feels pretty damn good. So better than it was five or six years ago. <clears throat> See, that, that, that's the beauty of it. And that would be breeze, uh, enjoying the contest prep. You see, this is, I, I, I see we, we have uh, so many clients. And you have a client that's so miserable during the training, right? <laughs> during the prep, the everything bothers them. This bothers them. This, bothers them. I mean, most of my shows, I really, and I did 110, 72 pro shows. I enjoyed it. You know, there, there was a few times that okay, I, I wanted to, you know, pull the miracle and rush it and do something that I didn't supposed to. But uh, when you have like this, uh, I was going to say 12 to 16 weeks, but as I said, 16, 20, you know, even better. Uh, I just think that 
your body fat loss job is already finished which is beauty so i think that you, your starting position will be way ahead of some fat so that needs to first get in shape right you, you are close to the counter shape so i don't think you need really 20 weeks but uh, hey you know oh no i meant like um 20 yeah, weeks yeah. right i'm fully bodybuilding with my training and everything like that that's exactly. what i meant yeah, not well, like prep <laughs> i know what you mean <laughs> no, no, no i'll disappear <laughs> you know you know look that's actually a really good topic you know where when people are miserable and prep and everything's wrong and um i have this talk about with some people sometimes where you know people who love walking will walk the furthest people who love the destination will walk the least right. furthest so when it comes to preparation you do get people that love the idea of competing love being lean love being ripped love being on stage and then you get the people that just love the process the lifestyle everything because i'm like you i love the prep and when people saw that i was getting in shape i got criticized years ago for getting really really crazy shape for a photo shoot when i was sponsored by animal and they're like bro it's a photo shoot relax and i'm like one i enjoy the process it's easy two like why wouldn't i want to represent myself the best way possible so like getting in shape this time like Milos, I never wrote my diet down. I did it all in my head. And when it was time to refeed, I, I would make the adjustments, but I, I like it and, and I enjoy it. I enjoy everything about it. Uh, so that aspect is so foreign to me when people enter prep and they're like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so hungry. I can't wait to eat this. I can't wait to eat that. When I'm in prep, I never think about any of that. Yeah. I think about the process of reading my physique. Do I need to feed? Do I not? I'm enjoying the training. I'm enjoying the grind. I like seeing the changes week to week. I'm obsessed with all of that. Writing notes like you do. Like I have some notes downstairs that I wrote that I was kind of like, you know, this is something I might want to consider doing differently or this, this is my response. And like you said for me to do, remember after post-show, after this thing, you said, start feeding aggressively. Well, I did that. Um, and uh, I went up to 100 grams of carbs per meal, so 500 grams of carbs, and my weight moved like one pound, and I just looked grainy, harder, drier. And, and it's it, screaming for it. Yeah, and it, and my digestion was weird the first day, and then it was fine second, third, fourth. Yeah. And I did it for four days, and it was fine. Yeah, but on that note, because this is, uh, again, for whoever is listening, is, this is two elite coaches and pro bodybuilders, they've been there done that so on the first point that you're saying uh all these miserable people because mi misery loves companies is oh why would you be in shape for a photo shoot uh, is, uh, excuse me i mean uh photos are forever number one that goddamn photo i take you know 20 years from now <laughs> like what i'm doing now there's people say Milos, come on stop stop living in the past i'm not living in the past i'm just enjoying the memories you know you said you know when i look at it why would i not but for me every photo shoot i took was just like a contest prep i swear to you i mean you know of course not maybe exactly exactly but i would try to time it you know carb up a little bit and drop the water and you know uh, put the tan on for a photo shoot i mean yeah. my gym was official gym for a uh, uh, flex magazine photo shoots you know for like six years and guys were obligated to come to the gym to shoot with Chris Land. And Chris Land would come to me sometimes. I don't want to mention the names because I don't want to insult him. He said, yeah, he's looking at me. He said, he's like just that uh, serious British accent. Like, hey, what am I going to do with this, you know, bloody mess? Like, what do you mean? I said, you know, I can't take a picture of this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, hey, guy flies from wherever to come to the Flex magazine uh, in a photo shoot and showed up in a shape that photographer doesn't want to take a pictures of. So cancels the thing, calls Joe Weider, you know, and then screams and yells, right? Uh, uh, so, you know, pretty much uh, then they told me, okay, can I make sure to always call the guys and check on them and make sure to tell them to, to take the photo shoot seriously? <laughs> so that's about that, uh, what you're saying. Uh, uh, you like to look good even for the photo shoots. You said uh, uh, something else. Who doesn't like being super lean, shredded, you know, in shape when you're in a contest prep, right? And every which way you move, you see the fibers upon fibers. I mean, 
that feeling that feeling i miss now you you have it right now so uh you know uh, uh which you should enjoy it fully those people that don't uh, realize how great does it feel in superb shape need to get in superb shape to appreciate it more you know so you know that's thing and before i forgot you mentioned okay you're a nutritionist you are the the uh, pro bodybuilder and coaching others and us just like me right of course i know what i'm supposed to eat and then of course i eat that but i promise you when i didn't write it down in these journals that i showed you before right you know, if i didn't time it and measure it i find myself being off okay i find myself being off so what I did, even uh, if you look at the pages, sometimes in the middle of a day, I would just calculate, uh, am I on the track? If I plan my 500 grams of protein in a day, and it's a midday, I'm supposed to be there at 250, whatever, right? Uh, you know, Because I, I was not so particular to say, I must wake up and I must have a egg white chicken breast or turkey breast or beef, you know, no. I would always wake up and I would have my choices. We talk about it. You do the same. You give them yeah. choices of protein and then choices of carbs, you know, things like that. But what I gathered from you and, and listen, all my respect goes to you. That's why I even told you, Chris, you, you look so freaky good. You must compete because your uh, shape is beautiful. Your body is the next level. Your condition is uh, out, outstanding you should compete and you um got there with your specific diet which is great 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 when we analyzed everything right i would gauge that you have you're a little bit under caloric and uh you know for a little bit too long right you know how that is you know for a while it goes the right way but then you can hit the but then start being kind of catabolic and then you're afraid to eat so once you achieve these levels of uh, low body fat so that you have i really think you can bump up the carbs and then then you can actually find out how far you can go i agree i agree and that's that's actually something that i wrote down mm -hmm. um and you know i'm pro you probably done that in the past for yourself but like i'm definitely one that can tolerate a high level of fatigue and still operate right yeah. and then of course like if i'm making progress i'm like okay progress is going good you know, I'm going to continue this route, but as you said, there's probably going to be a lot more wigworm than I think with adding a little more fuel to the fire, able to train a little harder. And of course, during the carb up, I can definitely be more aggressive, especially after these last, it's almost been what, two, oh, it's been exactly two weeks, 14 days since I ended the diet in Milos. I'm only up 1.8 pounds. <laughs> and um i'm just back on 50 megs of test and f8 three times per week my serum testosterone was just checked on friday my results came back tuesday and my serum testosterone was 510 so it's like it's in the middle it's probably going to start climbing a little bit more because i restarted the trt but that's where i'm at and um but those are the adjustments i will make next time for sure i won't be as afraid to uh uh to feed you know <clears throat> yeah yeah, yeah, for sure. But interesting when you say like uh, we can last, even when we can suffer. You know, we can suffer more. Uh, I have to say this: like three days ago, I was in the gym, uh, and uh, David Goggins came into the same gym and trained. Oh wow! Oh man, I was just uh, you know because I'm a huge fan, and of course as I'm training my giant sets, you know, all this, but I'm peaking constantly. I mean, this guy just is a nonstop. I mean, it's a unbreakable machine I, I, I swear to god some people have that aura and energy i mean they can come behind you and you don't know who and you can feel it he is that kind of guy like jesus christ uh, i love it and then just observe him and i mean endless non-stop 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 but uh, so i was watching some of the youtube videos with him and uh oh you know if it sucks uh if he doesn't suck he doesn't want to do it <laughs> he had to suck <laughs> this kind of things yeah oh my god but anyway uh, so you were you were mentioning like uh maybe you should talk a little bit about uh recovery and sleep and uh you know uh, so yeah that, that becomes that becomes a balance milos you know yeah. um 
in, in, we'll we'll go right into like um, recovery and sleep in what we're just talking about with being too low calories, right? Because for those people <laughs> who are very good at pushing through fatigue and kind of being getting good at uncomfortable, like Goggin said, right? You you get so good at being uncomfortable that things that normally make you feel uncomfortable are not a problem. Yeah. But sometimes that can cause an issue, right? I mean, if, if you're so good at that you start to ignore possible cues of lack of recovery, which ends up potentially turning into less sleep. Now, did you ever go through a situation in prep where like you were hammering it with cardio, low food, and your sleep just started to deteriorate where you really couldn't stay asleep for longer than three or four hours? You ever had that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, and this is a good topic, but I, I'm going to tell you another super funny thing because uh, uh, it's on the YouTube. And I don't know exactly, you know, Something about Mike Tyson uh, and recovery, sleep and recovery. <laughs> you got to see it, man. You should put it on this. So, you know, Tyson is sitting there, like, after training all amped up. And this is, you know, Mike, you know, how important is uh, sleep and recovery for you? And, and he was like, they say, excuse me? <laughs> how, how important is sleep and recovery? Uh, it's not important. <laughs> it's not important. Well, before a match, I sleep. I just want to punch his uh, his face in all night long. <laughs> yeah, but this is just a uh, you know, funny thing. I had to say it because uh, I love Mike also, and uh, this is just like his personality. Look, we mentioned we were talking about um, in a few of those um, episodes that you have about overtraining, right? And I think I, I even mentioned that for me throughout the years, there was no overtraining, it was just under sleeping, right? And yeah. under eating, yeah. under eating and sleeping. Uh, everything else, I mean, yes, there are many methods of recovery and we need all this, uh, yeah, but I'm under sleeping. You know, if you under sleep, yeah, you can uh, not recover. And, uh, you know, th this is the, the major thing. So sleep is a, is a really uh, crucial. And uh, as you said, if your uh, sleep is suffering, your physique and performance and everything else is going to suffer. There's no question about it. Yeah, it's like uh, when I, I find I see people do this in prep where they make mistakes. They will get fatigued. They generally may not tolerate fatigue well. So they tend to medicate themselves maybe with a higher dose of clen than they should or extra stimulants above and beyond what they probably should be using, which also starts to deteriorate their own sleep. Yeah. And then they have trouble sleeping. And then the next day they're extra tired. So they're like, shit, man, I need to do that again. I'm extra tired today. Then they do it again. And then that snowballs. And yeah. then all of a sudden their training starts to decline because yeah. now they're poor sleeping and they're overstimulated. Then their body starts to look flat. And then their ability to get leaner diminishes and they don't look right. Then they panic. Then they start doing extra cardio or taking away more food. And then they just put themselves into a hole. Yeah. I've had people in prep before start to do a little bit of that. And I tell them like, listen, we're going to bring the little food back in. You're going to cut your caffeine in half. And I want you to just take two full days off of training. Just, just relax. And then all of a sudden, like three days later, they lose like four pounds and they look and they feel better and they can sleep, you know? So listen, this is golden rule and uh, you're very logical and you respond to what you see. You know, if some coaches would just pre-plan something and it's going nowhere, but you don't stop, you have to stop it before it's too late, right? I had, and I had with uh, uh, Dennis Falk and Hiratara and uh, Sylvia and stuff like that. We plan our week, okay? But along the way, when I say, okay, no, 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 guys, no gym tomorrow. I say, what do you mean no gym tomorrow? I say, don't you come to the gym, you know, because, you know, I'm working here. I don't want you to, you know, come, you know, I'm not going to train you, but I don't want you to train anywhere. You need a day off. You know, it's like so apparent, right? So, like you said, sometimes sometimes they need a two days off. And it, it's... Uh, uh not common you know for me because i'm watching you know i, I don't want it but uh, if you let it go and uh, you, you see that the guy is just completely fatigued you know catabolic 
you know, on stimulants, had zero sleep, you, you know, you don't have to say it. It's it's printed on your forehead, right? You know, so yeah, you're not allowed to go back in the gym. <laughs> I'm serious. There was a couple of guys, I don't want to mention names, also the top pros, you guys know, from back in the early 2000s, they would try to, uh, they know that they would call my cousin that works there, it says Milos gone, <laughs> and if I'm gone, you know they will come to train. Yeah, I mean, you know, some of those guys they they believe like uh, literally, if I don't train today, I'm gonna lose the muscle. I'm a, and, and I know there is a uh, many guys like this. I I'm not gonna say that I was that guy, but uh, there was no power in the world that would make me skip my workouts. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's funny that mentality of more is better. And if they do anything less, they feel like they're going to go backwards when sometimes less for a short period of time makes you move forward faster, you know, especially in those situations. Like you said, you see it right on their face. It's like, I don't even need to ask. What's, what's just funny is I prepped with a CEDO for my pro debut. And I remember sending in my pictures and it's about midday. And uh, I sent him pictures in the morning and this is like mid morning. And he calls me and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm on the way to the gym. And he goes, no, you're not. He goes, no, you're not. I'm like, I'm not. He goes, I'm going to train chest and shoulder. He goes, no, you're going to take the day off today. Um, head to the grocery store. Why don't you uh, pick up like a ribeye steak, a couple of baked potatoes. And I want you to do this, this, and this and rest today. Send me pictures tomorrow. I'm like, <laughs> really? No uh, training? I was like, I want to train. Okay. And he was like, I don't care. I send, I send pictures the next day. And he goes, dude, look. And he puts this picture side by side. And I was like, fuller, harder. I'm like, he's like, your body looked a little tired. We need to stay ahead of it. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, you train today? And I go, yeah. And he goes, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a good example of like, you know, he's, he's oh, saying something that I couldn't at the time, you know? Oh, I want to hear more Chris to see the stories. That's great. I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. And, dude, he definitely put a lot of perspective um, where things don't have to be so e. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, when I was carving up, you know, he comes to my room and I'm like, Chris, what do you want me to carve up on? Like, this is what I got. I brought everything. Like, I brought everything you could possibly need and some. And I'm la like listing off all these things. He's like, oh, whatever. Just pick 30 carbs of something that you normally use and digest well. And we'll start with that. And I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah. And then uh, he's like, at one point in prep, I was like, what am I eating tonight? Because it's like, oh, Wednesday before the show. And he's like, well, what do you normally eat? And I'm like, I, I normally have my steak, my potato. He goes, well, you're going to have your steak and your potato. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean Wednesday? I mean, Saturday, on Saturday, no? What's you that? You said uh, Wednesday before the show, but uh, is this uh, show on Thursday or show is on Saturday? Show is Saturday. Show yeah, is Saturday. Yeah, okay. So that's still, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, it's just funny, like, he's just so, you know, oh, that will work, you know? I remember at one point in time, I was like, I think I was four weeks out. And I'm like, Chris, should I bring in the orals? And he's like, ah. Oh, we look so good right now. It's like I don't I don't know if we need to. And he goes, but we could. <laughs> he, yeah, you know, it's just yeah. it's totally different perspective. And uh prepping with him was just hilarious. Yeah. And he's definitely somebody that um has you know that dry humor, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love yeah, it. I was uh I was this is a good story. This is good to see a story. So I was a week out and I was doing a guest posing. And you know, sometimes you get in your own head and you know, you know, it's almost like embarrassing, but it all happens to us at some point. And um, I'm a, I'm a week out, got my tan on, about to do some guest posing. I'm looking at my physique and I'm like, ah, I'm just not impressed. You know, like I, I look good, but it's not impressed. And I'm like, I text Chris. I'm like, hey, Chris, um, are, are, am I where you want me to be? You know, where we are. And he responds with Chris last Tuesday. Um, I had an optometrist appointment and uh, he said I had perfect vision. <laughs> Meaning, shut the fuck up. I, I can see fine with my eyes. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love it. <coughs> I mean, uh, 
he, he seemed that way. I just never had an, exactly that kind of conversations because we don't prepare each other. But uh, I heard from many other guys, you know, uh, or uh, they would want to have a potato or something, and uh, he gives them a muffins or or a donuts and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, this yeah, muffins. Gonna, yeah, yeah, this is going to do nothing for you. And uh, I have that one. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you got to love him because, listen, he's uh, in the sport as long as I am, competed and uh, had a tremendous physique. Remember his physique? I mean, yeah. I'm kind of bummed that he didn't go and uh, pursue the pro uh, league. You know, he could have. He had that shape. Here's a quick story, Milos. I did my first show, did not do well. Um, I had somebody help me locally, lost 36 pounds in like seven weeks, eight weeks. It was insane. Um but after that, I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to learn. And I'm, you know, this is back in 2005. Like there's not a lot of coaching going on. And people like yourself who were coaching weren't mm -hmm. taking people on like me. You know what I mean? So I bought all of Chris Aceto's books, the championship bodybuilding, the key to fat loss. I read all of his books and then followed everything to the concept to the T that year. I put on 13 pounds of stage weight, came in better condition, and won my show. And yeah. that was funny. It's like that's how everything started in me wanting to really love the process of prep and learn because I was like, I'm listening to this guy. It didn't work out. Well, I want to try to do it myself, read these books, educate myself through my second show, and came back significantly better. Um, just in that one year, and I did it myself, and I was proud of that. But that was kind of funny how we just take those simple layman's terms uh, because those books are very easy reads, <clears throat> very easy concept to understand, and just applied it, and yeah. it ended up working flawlessly. But that, that's a funny story. Yeah, it's a good story. it is. But but you're not that better, you know, than, than most of the people. I mean, uh, the, guys, think there is a, some secret. You know, there is something special and shit like that. You know, it's always like this, like, right? I, I mean, to the point of eating this, eating that, uh, I promise you, all of my athletes, uh, I don't give them the diet. Give me what you're eating. So I see the foods that you're eating, okay? And now uh, foods that you're normally eating, I'm just adjusting how much when, you know, uh, things like this. I have a... Now... Uh, four Brazilian pros, you know, the, the Brazilian, the, the all good guys. You know, this uh, one that uh, just just came about and he says to me the diet, six meals, chicken, 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 chicken. Oh. So I so said, like, okay, um, wh why just chicken, right? You know, do you eat? Uh, can you eat eggs? Oh, yeah, I can eat eggs. Uh, can you eat fish? Oh, yeah, I can eat fish. Uh, how about beef? Oh, yeah, I can eat beef. I said, well, why would you just eat chicken? I, I don't get it, you know? But that's interesting because uh, remember Andreas Munzer back in the day? And yeah. uh, the, all the Germans, all the Germans, I had so many Germans, right? They was, they was doing uh, uh, Andreas Munzer diet. And you know what it was? Chicken and quark. Quark is that uh, German, kind of like a cottage cheese, but it's not a cottage cheese, but it's like, Pure protein, delicious. I mean, I, I wish we have it here. I mean, it's just pure protein. You can use quark to make a, a cheesecake. It's that good. I mean, seriously. Wow. My, my biggest regret is that we don't have that. Every time when I go to Germany, the easiest way to eat the protein, even though it's a dairy, it, it doesn't have the same effect. I mean, they were all, all of them. Like right now, I have a German guy. He's eating like... 500 grams over a pound of quark a couple of meals a day but anyway uh so andreas was doing chicken and quark as a protein rice and pineapple okay those are the four things in the diet nothing else <laughs> and then you know the, there is a this guy this guy this guy german guy it's okay send me your diet it's always the same exact diet i mean monkey see monkey do they were all just doing the exact same thing yeah. Yeah, they just yeah. There's there's so much there's there's so much merit to having a variety of food of proteins and having the choices like yeah. it, there really is for gut health and micronutrients, et cetera, especially in the off season, you know? But but you tell me because you're you're certified and I, I can't really discuss this at that level because uh, I'm not aware of but uh Charles Polican again, 
you know, back in the day was saying, hey, you know, if you eat exclusively one kind of protein, exclusively like chicken, you within a month or so, you're going to start being allergic to chicken. And uh, you're going to, and I didn't believe him. I, I, I backed him a couple of times. I, I lost a couple of times. And I, I won a couple of times. But that time I lost. Yeah, he showed me that uh, on uh, the the test that yeah, you become you 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 uh, make uh, uh, antibodies and you become allergic if you do it exclusively. There's, yeah. You know, so yeah. So the the research on that is still a little limited. But this is what they theorize: the fact. Well, actually, this is proven. But mm -hmm. it's more of like an intolerance versus an allergy because, you know, you have your IgA and your IgG blood markers. So when yep. someone's diet's very limited and repetitious, 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 the, the gut doesn't get a diverse amount of food. And when it doesn't get a diverse amount of food, it starves the healthy bacteria and the gut microflora. And as the gut microflora starts to deteriorate and die, your ability to simulate and digest food starts to decrease. And then all of a sudden you start to have an intolerance to all the foods that you eat. And then, then people be like, oh crap, I can't eat this anymore because this, then I'm just gonna eat this. And eventually they're only eating two foods and then they have a problem with those two foods. So there is a lot of um, truth to developing those intolerances when food's too limited. And, and yeah. people in bodybuilding, we're always like easy, convenient, easy, convenient, easy, convenient, but that comes with a cost, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the. It's perfect explanation. I mean, I, I couldn't have done it that way. So uh, I'm glad that you clarified this. So whoever is listening, do not be so like myopic and yeah, uh, chicken, 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 chicken. <laughs> you know, so, uh, fish, 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 fish. You know, well, I don't know how is your diet, but my diet was, would always be egg white meal, chicken meal, beef meal, you know, fish meal, salmon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <100%. laughs> you just said my diet. I, I have... Sometimes two egg meals a day. Yeah. Always have one. I have chicken every day. I have beef every day. And I'll have salmon at least three or four times per week. So yeah. that's kind of what I float around. But Milos, I got to fly my yeah, friend. Yeah, we got to go. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, good discussion, catch. man. Um, I'm glad your weekend went well. My weekend was pretty good. But uh, free talk is good, man. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you next time. Yeah, early next week. All right? Yep. All right. Well, okay. 100%. Have a good one. I know All you're right, Milos. Take care, buddy. Okay.